Well, good morning and welcome to On This Palm Sunday. My name is Jeremy and I'm part of the team here at St. Melitus. It's my pleasure to unpack the reading that we've just had. I can't imagine that when Stu was putting together the readings for this uh, time, he had any idea of the situation that we'd be in. And yet this story of Jesus in the garden is just so appropriate for the time we find ourselves in. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But first, how are you this morning? If I was to ask you out of 10 to rate how you are feeling, what score would you give yourself? Well, my hope and prayer is that as we spend time worshipping together, praying to our Lord, that whatever your score was at the start of the time, then by the end of our time together, it will be higher as we encounter the presence of the living God and we allow God's Holy Spirit to fill us afresh once more and equip us for whatever lies ahead. But we live in interesting and challenging times. When my wife Margaret and I used to do primary school presentations about Easter week, we talk about how at the start of Holy Week the disciples might be feeling and how they then went on a roller coaster ride through the week. And for many of us, the last two to three weeks may well have felt like a roller coaster ride. We're in uncharted territory. Some of us may be directly affected by having members struggling with COVID-19. All of us have had to change our lives dramatically. And so we need to pray for the victims of coronavirus and their families. We need to pray for those on the front line treating those people. And we need to pray that an effective treatment would be found fairly soon. And that the studies currently investigating a treatment will report a positive outcome by the end of April. But we also need to pray for all those who are making sure we have food on the table. All those in the food supply chain, all those frontline council workers, those in the food banks and particularly for Janet and her team locally. It's a difficult time and it may be a time when it's hard for us to sense God's presence. Paul in his letter to the Romans says that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is ours in Christ Jesus. But sometimes I wonder whether we can really feel that sense of God with us. Recently I've been reading about the Reverend Richard Coles. He was a member of a pop group, the Communards, in the mid-80s who had a number of successful songs. And at that time, he felt that church was fairly irrelevant to his life. He had a friend, Hugo, who was dying of AIDS and he went to see Hugo. And he looked to find comfort in Christ the light, in Christ the King, in Christ the healer. But he couldn't find any comfort there. But then he looked at Christ on the cross bleeding, battered, suffering, rejected. And he recognised that there was somebody who identified fully with the pain and suffering that Richard and his friends were going through at that time. He saw there the Christ who was worth getting to know. And it may be that at the moment you're finding it quite difficult to find Christ in the places where you normally would find Christ. It may happen today, it may happen tomorrow or next week. But if that is the case, then I would encourage you to come to this passage. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus on his knees before God the Father, saying, if it's possible, take this cup away. But not what I will, but yours be done. And as he prayed, the sweat falls like drops of blood. And modern medical research has shown that it is possible that if you're suffering from anxiety and stress, 
for your sweat to appear like drops of blood. But what had happened to Jesus just a couple of hours earlier in the upper room? There he was with the disciples sharing bread and wine, confident about what lay ahead, seemingly at peace with it. But here in the garden, in his humanity, the full enormity of what lay ahead suddenly hits him. And if it impacted Jesus in such a way, it's not surprising that we struggle with some of what's happening in the world today. But here in the garden, Jesus is perhaps wondering whether God would intervene. That God may have a different idea. You may recall the story of Abraham and Isaac, how when Abraham is about to kill his son Isaac, suddenly God says, look, here is a sheep for the sacrifice. Don't sacrifice your son. But Jesus prays, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus is willing to go through with the plan. And in these uncertain, uncharted times, there's a lot of things we don't know. But there are some things that I think we can be clear about. Firstly, we know that love wins and evil is defeated. We know that Jesus will return. We know that Jesus will reign as King. And we know the desire of God is that all will come back to God. And we can be confident about the end of the story. Secondly, there are a number of things I think we can do which we may find helpful in increasing our sense of the presence of God with us. Stu at the start of Lent talked about spending perhaps 10 minutes each day just listening to God. You also may want to pray to God, talk to God about how we're feeling, pray about individuals and circumstances. We may find worship songs helpful at this time and reading the Bible, seeing God speaking through the ages and listening to talks. The Right Reverend Stephen Cottrell, who's the Archbishop of York elect, said on Songs of Praise recently that he found some words of a Matt Redmond song particularly helpful. You may be familiar with the song 10,000 Reasons, which includes the line. Whatever may fall, whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. And may we all be singing when the evening comes. Thirdly, let's use all the various electronic means available to us to keep in contact with each other, be it mobile phones, video calls, Skype, other services are available, text, whatever you can to keep in contact with people and make sure that they're doing okay. Particularly those people who you may be in contact with infrequently, who you may feel maybe on their own. And then fourthly, Mark and I have found it helpful to limit the amount of news that we watch. Yes, it's important to watch the news to see if there are any changes to the restrictions in place. But we found that if we watch too much, there's a danger that all the reports of the tragedies that are happening in Italy and Spain and elsewhere may impact negatively on how we feel. Not only that, but the debates about whether the government are doing too much or too little aren't hugely helpful. We've also found it's better for us to watch the early evening news at six o'clock so that we can process what is said during the evening rather than watching the late evening news and then going to bed thinking about what we've just seen, which might delay our ability to get to sleep. You may find other things that are helpful at this time do Share them so that we can support each other. This is a difficult time for us all. But finally, during this challenging time, let us be church. Let us show love and kindness to friends, to family, to those we encounter. Let us be willing to go the extra mile where we can. But let us also recognise the reality of where we are and the need to do all we can 
to minimise the spread of this virus. In the garden, Jesus prayed, not my will, but yours be done. So today, tomorrow, and in whatever circumstances lie ahead, may that be our prayer too. Amen.